Hello, welcome to Wednesday. Ah! As always, knocking things over. I don't have enough space on my painting table. Um, which is always the case, because if I did have enough space, I'd fill it with more stuff. I'm not very tidy. I've made some really good progress this week. Um, I've been painting raptors, as is always the case. So this is the Primaris Lieutenant who hasn't had much work done to him. I've touched up some of his edge highlights, made some things match the rest of the squad better, because I did this guy first, and he wasn't uh, done exactly the same way as the rest of the squad, but now you can't really tell the difference. But the rest of them have now had their Aquilas painted. I think they've come out quite nicely. And all of the leather parts have been painted. So there we go. Now I've recorded um, a tutorial on doing this leather using... who was it I used? Uh, I think it was this guy. Yeah, this guy. So you'll watch me paint this holster in that video that's going to be coming up soon. It's not going to be a long one, probably 15 minutes at most with some real-time footage rather than just being sped up, just detailing specifically how I do these holsters and pouches and all of the belts and straps, for example. The strap on his bolter there, looking all cracked and nasty. So these guys are currently just held together with blue tack. And I've started going through and painting all of the areas are going to be black, or metallics black. Um, so, inside the vents. These are going to be metallics. I'm going to repaint all of the piping in the undersuit. Anything that's going to be uh, rubber type looking material is going to get repainted. So I also did that on this, the Maris Lieutenant. I had previously painted these bits. Uh, the same as I had the holster here, and the sergeant's, um, whoops, the sergeant's belt buckle. But I've decided that I'm going to do them differently. For the rubber, I'm going to use a slightly darker colour. It's not as going to be as bright a highlight. Try and make the material look a bit softer and more pliable. So it's probably going to have a lot more blue in it. Um, I need to repaint this his uh, undersuit bits and his arms there back to a darker colour. Again, I also touched up the edge highlights on this guy. So, yeah, all of the leather is done. The one that took the longest was the Reaver. The sergeant here, he's got by far far the most, let's focus on that, by far the most leather pouches on him, it took a good long while to paint all of those, and um, I need to go around and blackline some, some of the leather areas a bit better, I also had to touch up this guy's highlights as well because they weren't great, and I pretty much repainted this knee pad with a brush it had gone a bit weird with the airbrush. But it's all coming along. Um, yeah, the Aquilas were fun to paint. The leather was fun to paint, although it did take me about six hours total. It's about an, It took me about an hour per marine to do all of the leather on them. Um, not counting base coating them Rhinox hide. It's coming out pretty good. And then there was this guy who, it turns out the only bit of the leather that you can actually see with any clarity is that strap on his leg there. But I still went in and painted these pouches and all this stuff that's <laughs> hidden behind this arm. Because I didn't realise. I, I took his uh, cloak off. I was like, right, I'll paint all of this stuff now, and then I didn't realise that you just really couldn't see it at all. 
once he's got the cloak on and his arm on. So, yeah, that's uh, far better painted than it needed to be. But, you know, it's done now. Uh, somebody asked me how I'm going to gap fill this. Basically, I'm going to be using matte varnish. So, once it's um, glued together, you just run matte varnish down the line. Just dribble it in here. Let it dry fully, and then keep doing that until eventually you've got a smooth coat over there because the matte varnish will self-level and it will dry clear and it's got uh, talc in it which is basically um, a material that once dried will actually form a kind of semi-solid layer it's a bit like using the PVA glue method but it's a little bit better a little bit more controllable than PVA glue so I've done it before I did it on the Zarbag Skits uh, warband for Warhammer Underworlds where some of their wrists had big gaps in them where they joined because I was painting them separately. I, get, I just used matte varnish to fill those gaps. Works really, really well. And it's really, really easy. And for those wondering, uh, this here... Oop. Hot. This is the matte varnish that I use. This is a big half-litre bottle. Um, and I just use this straight through an airbrush. Don't even need to dilute it or anything, because it goes straight through. Um, in terms of other videos, let's fondle a model while I wait, while I talk about this. Uh, let's fondle this guy. Yeah, in terms of other videos, I have the, like I said, the leather painting video is going to be coming up soon for patrons. It's not going to take me long to edit that. Um, my airbrush nozzle was cracked. Um, has been cracked for quite a while now, I think. But when I went to record the How to Thin Paints Part 2 video for the with the airbrush, I did a trial run, and I noticed that a lot of my um, paint patterns were spattering quite a bit, even though my paint was quite thin. Um, and I got my airbrush nozzle underneath uh, a magnifier and I noticed it had a very tiny hairline crack in it and to be honest it's not really been affecting me um, I painted these guys with it and they've come up fine but I didn't want to make a video where I had um, a cracked nozzle and I was demonstrating the different ways that paint consistency affects the paint um, spray pattern out of your airbrush and have and do that while I had a cracked nozzle. So I ordered a new cracked nozzle but it was the bank holiday Easter weekend so it's not even going to get shipped until uh, yesterday. So it's probably not going to arrive until tomorrow. So I've got to wait for that to arrive before I can actually record the video. But I know what I'm doing with it, I just have to record it and then edit it down from what will presumably be an hour and a half of rambling to 20 minutes of actually useful information. So that's coming and will be up on Patreon hopefully either next week, probably next week. Um, I've also got some kind of unboxing reviews for this stuff minimonsters.eu these are toadstools which I'm going to be using on bases um, and this is same place candles which I was going to use for Sons of the Phoenix a lot of these look like they're going to be a bit too tall um, but they'll they'll be excellent on dreadnoughts or vehicles but then again I think for Sons of the Phoenix you don't want to go over the board on the candles because it will look a bit weird if every single marine's got candles on them and the only place they could really reliably put a candle and not have it fall over would be their backpack so maybe it'll just be a thing you know just for the sergeants but these are little resin candles from minimonsters.eu I paid for these myself I bought them um, I'm not entirely sure how well they'll take or what kind of scale they'll be like compared to power packs but I think most of them will be a little bit too big 
but they'd also work really well on vehicles, so there's that. Um, so Sons of the Phoenix video will be a converting video and then a separate paint job video. Um, once I get around to that, the paint job will be dead quick. And the Imperial Fists uh, painting tutorial, which I'm still going to do, I'm waiting until I'm in a place with these guys where I've basically only got the bases left to do, because the bases aren't going to take me a huge amount of time before I do anything else, just because I want to make sure that I've got my Golden Demon entry sorted. Um, and so that might not happen until after Golden Demon, to be honest, at this rate, at which point I'll knock out all of those Space Moon videos. Um, probably over one week, I'll just paint uh, those three Space Marines, get them done, and then I'll have to edit them over the following few weeks and get them up on Patreon. And then I'm going back to painting Eyes of the Nine for Warhammer Underworlds and painting that. And that will probably be the last Warhammer Underworlds painting video that I actually do because uh, the Warhammer Underworlds community is dying. It's almost dead. Like, online, um, it doesn't do the numbers anymore. And there's... The, there were people playing it, but it's basically just hardcore tournament people now. And they don't really care about painting videos that much. Um, so I'll still be doing Age of Sigma stuff, but I'll not necessarily be doing the entire Warband in a single video. And I'll probably be syncing up more with Age of Sigma releases rather than Warhammer Underworld releases specifically. Um, but there's a lot more people, there's a lot less people painting Age of Sigma stuff than painting Warhammer 40k stuff. And I enjoy painting Age of Sigma stuff a bit more. Also, post Golden Demon, I'm going to be focusing a lot more on painting my armies for me than painting specific, than trying to paint, keep up with releases for a skirmish game. So I'm going to be focusing on painting my Stormcast Eternal army and my Night Haunts army, and that's going to be making up the bulk of the content for the channel um, until I've got those done. So I'll be trying to find specific things to do on each of those that I can demo in videos. But I'll be doing uh, a bunch of stuff on that. So that's what's coming up and that's what I've got planned. Um, but yeah, Warhammer Underworlds slash Shadespire is basically dead on YouTube now. Um, it's not doing big numbers, and the only reason that any of the videos that I release might do big numbers for those is because they happen to be a popular army for Warhammer Age of Sigma. So, better to focus on the Age of Sigma stuff than the Underworld stuff. And that's about it. Um, yeah, nothing much else to report. All is going well here. Cracking on with the old Raptors. Got all of their belt buckles and black bits to paint next, which will include the bolt guns and all of their bolter weapons, because I'm not going to be doing many metallics on those. Um, and then, since I'm painting all of the heads separately, aside from the camo cloak on this guy, the be pretty much done. I've got some purity seals and honours to do. I might do a video on the purity seals because I'm going to try a different way of doing them that should be very interesting um, and very easy, but uh, give a good result. So I might do a video on that as well. And uh, then I'm on to decals for these guys, and then from decals it's weathering and bases and metallics. So that's what's left. And there's what? Three weeks? Two weeks? Three weeks. What day is it today? 24th? Uh, yeah, it's basically two weeks away. So I'm going to have to skip some work in order to get these finished. So, um, yeah, wish me luck. At the very least, I'll definitely get three of them finished. <laughs> which is enough to enter. I don't, think, don't necessarily think I might get all seven finished, but I'll definitely get three of them finished which is enough to enter the competition. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Sorry about the lack of updates, but this kind of always happens around this time. Um, and yeah, thanks. Bye-bye.